Okay, now we are on on the sixth lesson. Um, we're going to speak about the auxiliary verb to have. El verbo auxiliar tener. To have, haber o tener. To have had, haber tenido. Having, habiendo, teniendo. Had, habido o tenido. So we're going to go now with the um, indicative mode, modo indicativo, the present. Yo he o yo tengo. So we're going to do with the present indicative mode and present, presente. Okay, well, here we start. Mm, I have, yo he, yo tengo. You have, tú has, tú tienes. He has. Él ha, él tiene. We have, nosotros hemos o tenemos. We ha, you have, ustedes han o tienen. They have, ellos han, ellos tienen. We go to the imperfect past, pretérito imperfecto. And this is the simple pretérito perfect. Pretérito perfecto simple. Yo había, yo tenía, yo hube, yo tuve. So, I had, yo tenía, yo tuve, you had, tú tenías, tú tuviste. He had, él tenía, él tuvo. We had, nosotros teníamos, o nosotros tuvimos. You had, ustedes tenían, ustedes tuvieron. They had, ellos tuvieron. So if we go to the perfect tense, uh, again, we follow that the, to the perfect tense. I have, have had, yo he tenido. You have had, tú has tenido. He has had, él ha tenido. We had had, nosotros tuvimos. You had had, ustedes tuvieron. They had had, ellos tuvieron. We go now to the past perfect, plus cuan perfecto, or the better to have. Yo había, o yo hube tenido. I had had, yo había tenido. You had had, tú habías tenido. He had had, él había tenido. We had had, nosotros habíamos tenido. You had had, ustedes habían tenido. They had had, ellos habían tenido. Imperfect future, futuro imperfecto. Yo habré, yo tendré. Here we go with the imperfect future. I shall have, yo tendré. You will have, tú tendrás. He will have, él tendrá. We shall have, nosotros tendremos. You will have, ustedes tendrán. They will have, ellos tendrán. So we're going to the um, the perfect future again, and we got the futuro perfecto. Yo habré tenido. I shall have had. Yo habré tenido. You will have had. Tú habrás tenido. He will have had. Él habrá tenido. We shall have had. Nosotros habremos tenido. You will have had. Ustedes habrán tenido. They will have had. Ellos habrían tenido. And then can we go to the conditional. Yo debería. Yo tendría. Hubiera o tuviera. I should have. Yo debería haber. You would have. Tú tendrías. He would have. Él habría. We should have. Nosotros debimos tener. You would have. Ustedes tendrían. They would have, ellos tendrían. Now we go to the perfect conditional, conditional perfecto. Yo habría, hubiera tenido. I should have had, yo debería haber tenido. You would have had, tú deberías haber tenido. He would have had, él hubiera tenido. We should have had, nosotros habríamos haber tenido. You would have had. Ustedes deberían, deberían haber tenido. 
I go over this one because I went a bit fast. We should have had, nosotros habíamos haber tenido, you would have had, ustedes deberían haber tenido, they would have had, ellos deberían haber tenido. We go to the imperative mode, mode imperativo, or the verb to have again. And we go here, let me say, let me have, permíteme, permíteme, no, perdona, uh, we go, let me have, permíteme, permítame tener, let him have, déjale tener, let us have, déjanos tener, let them have, déjalos tener, that's an imperative mode. We go to the present, que yo haya, que yo tenga, that I have, que yo haya o tenga, that you have, que tú hayas o tenga, that he have, que él haya o tenga, that we have, que nosotros hayamos o tenemos, that you have, que ustedes hayan o tengan, that they have, que ellos hayan o tengan. Now we go to the preterit, the preterito, past tense. Si yo hubiese, hubiera, tuviese, tuviera. If I had, si yo tuviera. If you had, si tú tuvieras. If he had, si él tuviera. If we had, si nosotros tuviéramos. You can see the accent here on the E, tuviéramos. If you had, si ustedes tuvieran. If they had, si ellos tuvieran. Now we go to the past perfect, plus cuan perfecto. Si yo hubiera, hubiese tenido. This is, this, this, um, verbs are very important, uh, okay, and it's, it's good to go over it, at, over and over. But when it comes to, you know, having perfect sentences, with good grammar, they are very important to have. And uh, so we go with the, with the past perfect plus con perfecto. Si yo hubiera, hubiese tenido. If I, ha I had had, si yo hubiera, hubiese tenido. If you had had, si hubiera, u si tú hubieras, si hubieras, hubiese tenido. If he had, if he had had, si él tuviera, si hubiera, hubiese tenido. Uh, we don't use the, the middle if he, he, because obviously when you form the sentence, you know how to put he. If we, ha, if we had had, si hubiéramos, that's we. If si hubiéramos, hubiésemos tenido. If you had had, si ustedes, ustedes, if you. If you don't, if, when forming the sentence, when in conversation, then you wouldn't have form, you wouldn't say si ustedes. Uh, you would say, si hubieran, hubiesen tenido. If they had had, si ellos, si hubieran, hubiesen tenido. That means, si, si ellos hubieran, hubiesen tenido. If they had had. And I think it becomes the, the final, the verbs to have. And now we are going to move on to the next page. If you just hold on a moment, please. That's okay. Okay, now we are on, on vocabulary. We finished this verse already, which were on the, on the previous um, pages. So we go now to vocabulary. So I'm going to zoom the page so we can see the words a bit better. And um, I think here we are. Maybe a little bit more, perhaps. Okay, maybe a tiny bit more. Okay, uh, yeah, just about right, maybe. Okay, we start with some words here. Um, an umbrella, un paraguas, a journey, un viaje, a journey by land, por tierra, by land, por tierra, un viaje. A drawing, un dibujo, cheese, queso, butter, man mantequilla. You don't say manteca de vaca, it's an old fashioned word now. You say mantequilla. A cake, un pastelito o un pastel, without the I or I double L O, un pastel o un pastelito, small, small cake. 
a bottle, una botella, the stick, el bastón, money, dinero, when, cuando, much, mucho, mucha. Got some more words here. We got coffee, café, bread, pan, little, poco o poca, few, pocos o pocas, pleasant, agradable, Monday, lunes, 21, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 30, 30. A banknote, un billete de banco. Right, so now from here we come to the end of this page. Uh, we go down to the next page. And here we are going to start with dialogues. So we zoom the page. And we start with the dialogue. So a bit more. Okay. Uh, because we say, Have you my pencil? Tienes tú, tiene usted mi lápiz? No, I have, haven't. No, no lo tengo. How many sh shillings? Well, we don't use these coins anymore, but we could say how many dollars or how many euros. How many euros will you have? ¿Cuántos euros tendrá, tendrá tú, tendrá usted? I shall have 10 euros um, for... Um, but, coins um, of euros, um, don't know the coins of euros, <laughs> as you say, I shall have 10 euros, tendré, tendré 10 chelines y 4 coins, 4 monedas. Has he had a pleasant journey? ¿Ha tenido él un viaje agradable? No, he hasn't. No, no lo ha tenido. I uh, think we're going to add to the end of this page. Uh, we go to the next one, which you probably have more dialogues. Uh, let me see. Yes, he has some more. And uh, we go to... to finish the dialogue. Of. Will they have a banknote? ¿Tendrán ellos un billete? We, know we don't repeat banco. We say billete, a note. Will they have a banknote? ¿Tendrán, ¿Tendrán ellos un billete? ¿Un billete de banco? Yes, they will. Sí, lo tendrán. Has she any wine? ¿Tiene vino? ¿O tiene ella vino? No, she hasn't any. No, no tiene. Would, would they have the chalk? ¿Tendrían ellos el yeso? ¿O la tiza? No, they would have have the, no, they would have the paper. No, ellos tendrían el papel. Who will have much money? ¿Quién tendrá mucho dinero? Your sister, la hermana de usted o tu hermana. When shall I have your dictionary? ¿Cuándo tendré su, su diccionario, diccionario, uh, next Monday, el lunes próximo. Will you have had my umbrella? ¿Habrá tenido usted mi paraguas? ¿O habrás tú tenido mi paraguas? I shall have had your umbrella. Habré tenido su paraguas y mi bastón. I shall have had your umbrella and my stick. Habré tenido su paraguas y mi bastón. Have you my ring? ¿Tenía usted mi sortija o tenías tú mi sortija? No, I had your scarf pin. No, yo tenía su alfiler de corbata. Have you many friends? Have you many friends? 
¿Tienen ustedes muchos amigos? Yes, we have many. Sí, tenemos muchos. There's a lot of words, some words here that we don't use nowadays, so you know, don't have to uh, worry about these ones. Okay, so we go to the next page, and there's no more. The dialogue is finished. So we are, we're going to move on now to a conversation. Okay, now uh, we are on, on the sixth lesson with the conversation. So we're going to say, the book is on the table. El libro está sobre la mesa. Your feet are under the table. Tus pies están debajo de la mesa. My wallet is in my pocket. Mi billetera está en mi bolsillo. The picture is against the wall. El cuadro está contra la pared. Now we say, where is the book? ¿Dónde está el libro? It is on the table. Está sobre la mesa. Where are your feet? ¿Dónde están tus pies? They are under the table. Están debajo de la mesa. Where is my wallet? ¿Dónde está mi billetera? It is in your pocket. Está en tu bolsillo. Where is the picture? ¿Dónde está el cuadro? It is against the wall. Está contra la pared. Is the book under the table? ¿Está el libro debajo de la mesa? No, it is not. It is on the table. No, no lo está. Está sobre la mesa. Is my wallet on the table? ¿Está mi billetera sobre la mesa? No, it is not. It is in your pocket. No, no lo está. Está en tu bolsillo. Is the picture on the table? ¿Está el cuadro debajo de la mesa? No, it is not. It is against the wall. No, no lo está. Está contra la pared. Wow, well, we got a different sentence now. The desk is between the window and the table. El escritorio está entre la ventana y la mesa. I am in front of my pupils. Estoy enfrente a mis alumnos. The door is behind Mr. Brooks. La puerta está detrás del señor Brooks. You are near the blackboard. Estás cerca de la pizarra. Now we ask, where is the desk? ¿Dónde está el, el escritorio? It is between the window and the table. Está entre la ventana y la mesa. Where is the door? ¿Dónde está la puerta? It is behind Mr. Brooks. Está detrás del señor Brooks. Where are you? ¿Dónde estás? I am near the blackboard. Estoy cerca de la pizarra. Is the desk between the blackboard and the door? ¿Está el escritorio entre la pizarra y la puerta? No, it is not. It is, it is between the window and the table. No, no lo está. Está entre la ventana y la mesa. Am I behind the pupils? Because yeah, am I behind the students? Um, some schools may still use pupils, but most now, nowadays use students. Estoy detrás de los alumnos. No, no, you're not. You are in front of your pupils. No, no lo estás. Estás delante de tus alumnos. Are you near the blackboard? Estás cerca de la pizarra. Yes, I am. Sí. And uh, now here we come to the end of conversation of the lesson six. And the next now we're going to move on to lesson number seven. Adios. Hasta luego.